All right, we'll call this meeting to order. Welcome to the July 21st, 2022 meeting of the current Council of Governments. This is a transportation planning policy committee meeting, and uh, we'll start with the flag salute. So if y'all could please rise. Salute, pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. All right. Okay, we're going to start off with roll call, please. Couch. Couch. Here. Here. Helton. Here. Sorry. Blades. Crump. Here. Tafoya. Flores? Here. Cryer? Here. Navarro? Here. Lucinovich? Here. Para? Prout? Here. Reyna? Here. I'm sorry, who is speaking? Can you repeat that, please? Becky, I think that might have been just them talking in the background. I don't know if they were saying something else or not. If if you're online, can you mute unless you're going to talk, please? Thank you. Raina, did I call your name? Yes, you did. Okay, thank you. Scrivener. Here. Bob Smith is absent. Phil Smith. Trujillo. Vasquez. Here. Did I miss anyone? Thank you. Blade. Oh, bla thank you, Kyle. All right. Thank you, Ms. Napier. Okay, next is uh, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may, make, they may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Or do we have any one present that would like to make a comment under our public comments portion? Okay, seeing none, then we'll move on to item three, and this is special action item Assembly Bill 361 authorizing teleconferencing under certain conditions. Ms. Napier, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this item is our regular item that we um, have been doing so that we can continue to uh, have meetings both virtually and in person. Uh, this resolution is Resolution 22-30, and it um, is for the period of July 21st, 2022 to August 20th, 2022. And we're just asking that you adopt the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask if there are any comments on this. I, I don't think there are. And so we'll um, ask for a motion to approve and adopt the resolution. Move to approve. Second. Roll call vote, please. Couch. Couch. You're on mute. Couch, Helton, yes, Blades, yes, Crump, yes, Flores, yes, Cryer, yes, Navarro, yes, Lucinovich, no, Prout, yes. Reyna. Yes. Scribner. Aye. Vasquez. Yes. Thank you. David, did you want to vote? Yeah, I'm a yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we move on to our consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered all items on the consent agenda considered to be routine and non controversial by current COG staff will be approved 
by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in li listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. So um, if you review the consent agenda, we have items A through F on the consent agenda. Do we have any members of the public that would like to ask any questions or make any comments on the consent agenda? Okay, seeing none, I'll return to the council for any questions, comments, or a motion to approve. I move we approve. Second. You have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. <laughs> Vasquez. Yes. Scribner. Aye. Reyna. Aye. Prout. Yes. Lucinovich. Yes. Navarro. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Flores. Yes. Crump. Yes. Blades. Aye. Couch. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That takes us now to item five. This is 2021 Federal Transportation Improvement Program Draft Amendment Number 14. Ms. Pacheco, please. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Amendment Number 14 includes revisions to the State Highway Regional Choice Program, State Highway Operations and Protection Program, and Transit Program. The public review period ends July 22nd. The Kerncog Executive Director will consider approval of the amendment on July 25th. State and federal approval is required. At this time, I ask the chair to please open the public hearing, allow for public comment, and then close the public hearing. Thank you. The public hearing is now open, so we'll ask if there are any comments from the public on this item. Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing, and now- Thank you. Um, that's all we have to do, right? That's okay, it. thank you, Ms. Pacheco, appreciate it. All right, now we're on to item number, number six. Um, this is consideration for adoption, final 2022, Regional Transportation Plan, Sustainable Communities Strategy, and the final EIR report. And I'll now turn to staff. Um, this says Mr. Ball. I'm Mr. Raymond. <laughs> Please proceed. Good evening, Chairman, committee members, members of the public. Today we have before you the final 2022 RTP, which is the 2022 Regional Transportation Plan, Sustainable Communities Strategy, and Associated Documents. The RTP is one of the primary planning documents required for our obtaining our state and federal funding for our transportation projects. It's the long range plan for our regional transportation system out to the year 2046. We prepare this long range plan every four years, but it's a continuous process which involves extensive public outreach. This four year cycle, we garnered input from approximately 7,000 residents. Some of this was done through a statistically valid phone survey, also through public workshops and outreach at local community events across the county, such as Oil Dorado and Taft, the Kern County Fair, and the Ridgecrest Native American Petroglyphs Festival, just to name a few. We've also worked with staff from your cities and the county through our Transportation Technical Advisory Committee and our Regional Planning Advisory Committee. We presented the draft RTP to this committee in May during the public comment period, which uh, closed on June 16th. This final document includes the five comment letters received, three for the RTP and two for the, its environmental document, the responses to those comments and refinements to the document that did not affect the conclusion of the environmental analysis. As stated previously, this the development of this long range plan is a continuous process. Following adoption by this board, federal approval is anticipated in December of this year. And we begin working on the development of the next cycle, the 2026 RTP. However, there are still opportunities for refinements to the 2022 RTP um, through our RTP amendment process. We also have our short range plan, the 2023 Federal Transportation Improvement Plan, which focuses on inv investments occurring over the next uh, four years, which is consistent with the RTP and is part of the recommendation recommended adoption tonight. We'd like to thank all our stakeholders for their input during the development of these plans our board and committee members for all your input and the work you've put into this on this committee, along with the input from and work from city and county staff during the development of this plan to ensure that we can continue to obtain our funding for our regional transportation system. Um, on July 6th, the Transportation Technical Advisory Committee and Regional Planning Advisory Committee 
both unanimously recommended approval of these documents. And the action uh, for this item tonight is to authorize the chairman to sign resolution number 2231, adopting the 2023 Federal Transportation Improvement Program, the 2022 Regional Transportation Plan Sustainable Community Strategy, and corresponding air quality conformity analysis, and resolution number 2232 for the final environmental impact report for the 2022 Regional Transportation Plan, uh, one, certification of the environmental impact report, two, adoption of the CEQA findings of fact, three, adoption of the statement of operating considerations, and four, adoption of the mitigation monitoring program, and that'd be a roll call vote. Thank you, appreciate it. Do we have any members of the public that would like to make any comment on item number six? Okay, I don't see any, so I'll return to the council for any questions or comments, or I'll entertain a motion on staff's recommendation. I, I have a comment. If we have a comment? Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, Council Member Cryer. Thank you. Um, um, what's the bottom line on this, on that CEQA, on that, um, on number six? What's the, is there any drawbacks on that and improving it for the cities and stuff? Uh, which, which item are you refer referring to? On item number six. Am I on the wrong one? That no, you're right. Are you talking, you're just talking about the item itself? Right, the item itself. I was, okay. one more clarification on that, because uh, I was, when I see a couple buzzwords on here, I see more, rule, uh, more rules and regulations that we have to follow, but uh, I was looking at the down. Um, I, I, I didn't read the whole thing on here, but am I missing something as far as uh, the, what kind of rules are going to be coming if we approve this on the cities? Uh, th this is the the long range plan that we put all the the, the uh, capital improvement projects into. Um, so a big part big part of the work is um, you know arranging that, that list of projects in, in our strategic investments, and then there's also um, there, there's multiple parts to this plan, including the sustainable community strategy, which is a uh, well, air quality uh, conformity analysis and uh, was that all involved on that one as far as yeah th we do the air to quality meet certain analysis. criteria in order to okay I'll, I'll let Aaron I, I think I can help uh, uh, councilman uh, so we determined in our extensive analysis that the long-range plan uh, that involved every single one of the cities and the county will not adversely affect air quality. That, that is the, the bottom line in, in, in this report that's before you. This report, was, uh, this, these multiple documents were, were shared with and presented to e every city council in the county and also the, the Board of Supervisors. There's no additional uh, requirements that are being put on, on any of you with the, if the, if the current council of governments approves this and the federal government and Caltrans approve it, it will allow all the cities to continue to use their f federal funds that they receive through current COG. With, without approving this document, that could be in jeopardy. I thank you very much. The reason I was kind of questioning a little bit is that I know they're trying to abolish carbon or carbon footprint and carbon fuels in, in California by getting rid of cars in 2035 and stuff, I just want to make sure we're not going to make it more tougher for us to have our cars that we love so much. But anyway, thank you. Thank you, Council Member. And you have a motion from David Couch. Yes, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Couch? Yes. Blades? Aye. Crump? Yes. Flores? Yes. Cryer? Yes. Navarro? Yes. Lucenovich? Yes. Prout? Yes. Reyna? Yes. Scribner? Aye. And Vasquez? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item seven, public hearing and adoption of final sixth cycle regional housing needs allocation plan. Good evening. Good evening. 
uh, Mr. Chairman and board members, the regional housing needs allocation process began in February 2021. The RENA process identifies the number of housing units that each local government must accommodate in their housing element um, of its general plan. As part of the region's planning efforts, Kern Cog and our consultant team work with your local governments and community stakeholders on the RENA plan to identify areas within the region sufficient to house an eight and a half year produ production of the regional housing need. Additionally, the RENA allocates housing units within the region consistent with the development pattern included in the sustainable community strategy and it's part of the regional transportation plan. The 45 day review and appeal of the draft jurisdiction RENA share was from April 22nd to June 6th. KernCog received two comments from the cities of Bakersfield and Wasco during the comment period and there were no appeals. The comments and staff correspondence are included in the final RENA plan. After review and consideration, there are no re revisions to the RENA, RENA allocations. And attachment one shows the final RENA numbers. The final six cycle RENA is consistent with the RTP and SES and fulfills the requirements of the state housing law for the RENA. And the final RENA plan is available on our um, KernCog RENA webpage. The estimated housing element due date is January of 2024, and that due date is based within the 18 months adoption of the RTP. Staff presented the final RENA plan to the Regional Planning Advisory Committee during their July 6th meeting, and the RPAC recommended that, the, that this committee adopt the six cycle RENA plan. Um, pursuant to the Housing Government Code, KernCog is conducting a public hearing to consider adoption of this six cycle RENA plan. So the action is to open the public hearing, take public comment, and close the public hearing. And then authorize the chairman to sign the resolution number 22-34, adopting the final six cycle regional housing needs allocation plan with the roll call vote. Vote. Thank you. So at this time, the public hearing is open. Do we have any comments from the public on this item? Okay, I don't see any. We'll close the public hearing then, and I'll return to the council for any questions, comments, or a motion on staff's recommendation. Motion, couch. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second crier. Um, roll call vote, please. Or whichever, but you both said it. So uh, whoever Becky had. <laughs> whoever Becky, I'll leave that up to you. Okay, I don't want to get thanks. in the middle of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> couch. Yes. Helton. Yes. Blades. Aye. Crump. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Flores. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Lasetovich. Yes. Prout. Yes. Reyna. Aye. Scrivener. Aye. And Vasquez. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I don't believe we have any board member meeting reports under item eight, so we'll go on to nine Caltrans report. We have district six and nine, so we'll start with district six. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, members of the board. Uh, a few updates before I get into the projects. I did want to share that our Secretary of Transport. Oh, so sorry. That better? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Did want to share that the Secretary of Transportation, uh, Secretary Omashakin, and our new district, our new Director of Caltrans, uh, Director Tavares, will be visiting the Bakersfield area on August 9th. Um, we're still finalizing the venue, but it's looking like it might be at the county fairgrounds. So, more to report on that later. I did want to congratulate the city of Wasco on getting tercent funds for their electric buses, the amount of a million dollars. So, congratulations. You were one of three um, agencies in our district to get tercent money. So, congratulations on that. Mm -hmm. And just a reminder on a couple upcoming funding opportunities the Reconnecting Communities deadline. Um, that's the $1 billion over five years. That deadline is October 13th. And then the Safe Streets and Roads for All grant program, that deadline is approaching to, and that's $5 billion over five years. So if you need any support on those, feel, please feel free to reach out to me or my team. Be happy to assist however we can. Um, as for projects, the Bakersfield Freeway Connector Project, as they were out 58 and 99, all the hot mix asphalt pavement has been completed except for the final lift and the entrance to the future southbound Ming Avenue off ramp. Uh, the block wall has been completed between Main Avenue and Bell Terrace overcrossing, and that project's about 85% complete. Uh, the contract is scheduled for completion winter of this year. The 99 rehab at Palm Avenue overcrossing to Beardsley Canal, 
Um, so schedule work for, for July. I mean, this project is substantially complete. We're just working on the final punch list items. That includes some sign installation and striping, and we should be wrapping that up uh, this month. The old US 99 to White Lane Stair Out 99 Rehab Project. Uh, work between Panama Lane to White Lane. That work is shifted to the two outside lanes of lowering the freeway. The lanes under Panama Lane are in progress. The Panama Lane northbound on ramps are still closed. Uh, between Union Avenue and Stair Route 119, removal of the existing outside lane and paving is in progress. That project is a little farther out in spring of 2023 before completing construction. Uh, continue to work on the State Route 43 7 Standard Road Roundabout. That project's in the environmental phase. Uh, currently, we have the overall layout environment, environmental mapping complete, and we're working on the right of way footprint and costs and be drafting, out the, uh, drafting up the layout and cross sections for that project. The Union Avenue High Intensity Active Crosswalk, which is the Hawk signal, we're putting at State Route 204 and 8th Street. Uh, the contractor should be wrapping up the initial work by August, and the only thing holding that up is we're still waiting on delivery of the signal poles, and that just seems to be a supply chain issue, but hope to have it shortly after they complete their work in August. And then we did actually initiate another project in the same vicinity on Union Avenue where we're putting another Hawk at 10th Street. So that's our location where there's not currently a crosswalk, so we'll be adding a crosswalk, a Hawk signal, and then cutting in the median for pedestrian access um, in the future there as well. The Stay Route 46 gap closure project is segment 4C, uh, which is uh, the west of Browns Material Road and uh, east of the California Aqueduct. That project's still in design phase. Um, right away acquisition is underway, and we expect to have that project ready to list for advertisement here in the next week or two. The Taft uh, left turn channelization, so stalling a left turn channel at Stay Route 119 at the Kern Street uh, Airport Road. Uh, that project uh, was ready to list in April, and we expect construction to start in fall of this year. We also have a rehab project on State Route 19, 119 near Pumpkin Center Drive from Ash Road to State Route 119, uh, State Route 99 interchange. This project will restore the pavement to a state of good repair and extend the pavement life for an additional 20 years. That project is in the design and right-of-way uh, phase currently and will probably be ready to list in uh, winter of next year. And then the next handful of products I have on the list off are all State Route 184 products we're currently working on. Uh, the first one is the roundabout at Sunset. That project has some utility re relocation in progress before construction can commence, and we expect uh, full construction activities to start this August. We have another roundabout at State Route 223 and 184. Um, construction uh, expected to be complete by next year on that project. And then we have some rehab projects as well. So the first one is the Morning Drive Rehab Project. This project is going to re rehabilitate the current standards, existing roadway on 184 between Edison Highway for about eight miles to just north of Chase Avenue. Uh, there'll be complete streets elements added to this project, including things like ADA compliant sidewalk, curb ramps, conti continuous bike lanes in both directions. That project is currently in design and right-of-way phase. is about 95% complete. Um, that project is expected to uh, complete the right-of-way phase in August of this year. Then also added element to this project, we'll, we'll be doing some uh, broadband middle mile network connection. The district's tasked with delivering 1,000 miles of broadband. And so that'll be uh, added on the project as a change order when construction starts. Uh, the other rehab project, major rehab project we have on Weed Patch Highway, uh, this is on 184 between uh, Dunsmere Street and Breckenridge Roads. Same scope of work theoretically doing ADA compliant sidewalks, complete street elements, and continuous bike lanes in both directions along the project limits. Uh, that project will be ready to advertise next spring, and that project as well will have a change order. We'll be installing broadband middle mile network with this project upon construction as well. With that, that completes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions from the council? I have a question. Michael, I want to follow up on uh, two things. Uh, 40, Highway 43 at 8th Street, mm -hmm. uh, we had talked about a more visible pedestrian crossing. Uh, where are we with that? Or right, so so we did have that pilot project where we're doing the high visible visibility striping. You and I talked about doing potentially a re rectangular rapid flash beacon or something more along those lines. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we did have a meeting with our staff recently as part of our exact quarterly update we did. And um, <clears throat> probably need to follow up with them as well, but we... Um, Right now, because of the demand for rectangular rapid flashing beacons, we'd probably be able to do something in partnership with the city and figure it out as far as being able to pay for one at this current time. 
it could be something where you know if the city wanted to fund or we do the we do the installation maintenance but it's going to require some kind of partnership for us to install okay. something there but if you like i'm happy to revisit and, and, and follow up with your staff to see what you know what works for both yes, parties please do that because okay. uh, i continually see you know Understood. people trying to cross uh, that street mm -hmm. highway 43 at 8th street and uh, traffic just doesn't stop they pretend right. like they don't hmm. see you and, and there's yeah. you know it's a way accident waiting to happen and then 46 at Poplar, uh, you know, some beacons were installed there, uh, but what I had requested a long time ago was the Hawk system, and I know that uh, they said it would be installed in the future, and I'm just wondering, you know, when, do you have any idea as to when that might be? 46 and, I'll have to look into 46 and Poplar, and you said we indicated we'd be installing. Th th there's already some beacons, and, uh, and I always mispronounce that word, so forgive me. You no, know, you're fine, uh, yeah. Uh, the triangular beacons right um and and they are installed already but again that is not visible enough because you know there's uh, heavy traffic going through there oh so you're, you're, you're we had conversations like you're saying about installing like a, uh, the hawk for, system that's right i had okay. asked when we had this conversation um years back right. that uh, you know a hawk system would be a more appropriate uh, system to install there so could you uh, could yeah you i could, I could definitely follow up on that yeah, obviously the hawk systems are Obviously, yes, you're correct. They're a lot more visible, a lot more expensive. But um, let, me, let me look into that as well. Yeah, we, we have children that cross right. Highway 46, you know, to go to school. Of course, right now they're not in session, but uh, they, they do cross that, uh, that heavy traffic uh, road. And so I think that uh, it's very important that we have something more visible where, yeah. you know, it is pedestrian activated and that it would, it would actually stop traffic. Okay. Appreciate that. I will follow up with you. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Any other questions for Caltrans? District 6. Okay, seeing none, then we'll move on to District 9. Thank you. First, um, sorry I couldn't be there in person this month. I needed to clone myself, I guess, but um, I'll be back next month. I have just a few things to report on. Um, we uh, were really happy to find this week that the SR58 truck climbing lane is being recommended for the TSEP application. So we're moving forward with that application. We've been working with our headquarters staff on putting that together this week. And this is for a PA and ED and right of way funding. Um, we're also, District 9 is also really excited to um, announce that we're going to be applying with KernCog as joint applicants for the Reconnecting Community Grants application. Um, for the SR58 Cal City Boulevard Extension project. And we've been talking about that for a while, so so that's that's a, a good news. As far as projects, the uh, Rosamond Mojave Rehabilitation Project on State Route 14 continues to work on some uh, some adjustments. <laughs> so the um, the inside southbound lane continues to be closed, and all other lanes and ramps are open and the speed mile, speed limit continues to be 55 miles per hour through there because it's an active construction site. We have a few projects on the state highway system that do have uh, minimal or no delays. That's the Red Rock Canyon Gardwell Rail Work on State Route 14, um, the Ridgecrest Utility Work and Ridgecrest on State Route 178 between Drummond and Ward Avenues. And then to Hatchapi median work on a State Route 58 between Room Road and State Route 202. And that's it for my report. Thank you. Any questions for District 9? Okay, I'm hearing none then. Uh, we'll move on to, thank you both very much uh, for your reports. Moving on then to Executive Director's Report, Mr. Hakimi. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. I have a few items on this agenda. Uh, the CTC, that's the California Transportation Commission, met June 29th and 30th. And I'm happy to report that um, Bakersfield received their final installment of $19 million for the Centennial Mainline Project. Thank you to Supervisor Scribner to ha who helped negotiate that uh, loan arrangement I think it was about four years ago when we flew up to Sacramento and oh, yeah. sat in the CTC um, conference room and negotiated this agreement. So yeah. thank you um, and to the CTC and to Supervisor Scribner and all who were involved with it. Um, 
making that loan happened, it accelerated that project by at least a year. Um, the Friant Kern ATP project in Bakersfield metro area received a 20 month extension and several allocations were made to shop projects throughout Kern County. The next CTC meeting is August 17th and 18th in the Bay Area, and I will attend virtually. Uh, over the last month, we've continued to have meetings on 99 and 58 missing connectors, um, Highway 204, also known as Union Avenue. Michael mentioned 7 Standard and 43. Good progress is being made there. Also, State Route 33 um, safety improvement projects. I had a meeting on last week. Um, continue to meet on the progress of State Route 46 construction in Kern County and also in San Luis Obispo County. And also, and finally, truck climbing lanes on State Route 58. Uh, good news that we have been approved by Caltrans to go after funding for the state. Um, getting more and more optimistic that um, we will get some truck climbing lanes built in our lifetimes on State Route 58. That concludes my report. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Akimi. Do we have any questions for our executive director? Either in house or online? Okay, hearing none. Are in any member statements? Okay, hearing none, then we will adjourn <laughs> this meeting. We'll move on to our current Council of Governments agenda, and um, we have the same roll call, so we'll just move right into it. And uh, we'll go ahead and I'll ask one more time for public comments. I don't see anyone. Then we'll move on to our consent agenda. And once again, all items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial. And you, you heard the spiel on the first agenda, so I won't go through that. And so do we have any questions or comments on the consent agenda items A through G? Motion to consent. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second to approve the consent agenda? It's a point second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We'll call vote, please. Vasquez. Yes. Scrivener. Aye. Reyna. Aye. Prout. Yes. Lucinovich. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Crump. Yes. Blades. Aye. Couch. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that brings us now to item four on our agenda. This is the ATP Cycle 5 Safe Routes for Cyclists in Kern County's Disadvantaged Communities. And good, good afternoon, or sorry, good evening. Good evening, board members and staff and attendees. I'm Linda Urata, regional planner here at Kern Cog. And I'm thrilled to bring to you the active transportation program known as ATP, Cycle 5 Safe Routes for Cyclists in Kern County's Disadvantaged Communities. It's an agreement between Kern Cog and Biking for Fun doing business as Bike Bakersfield. Kern Council of Government seeks to increase active bicycle transportation through a program that raises confidence in cyclists and improves safety along bike routes in Kern County's disadvantaged communities. As defined by Cal Enviro Screen 3.0, the version at the time of our funding application. The 13 disadvantaged communities are located in the cities of Arvin, Bakersfield, California City, McFarland, Shafter, Taft, Wasco, and the communities of Button Willow, Lamont, Lost Hills, McKittrick, and Wofford Heights. KernCog was awarded an ATP Cycle 5 grant of $792,000 from the California Transportation Commission. The agreement was executed on January 26, 2022, and terminates on May 31, 2024. The award to Bike Bakersfield will be $693,152. And the agreement with Bike Bakersfield and its partners, California Walks, the Kern County Library, and Snyder's Cyclery, will be executed tonight upon your vote and terminate on February 16, 2024. Bike Bakersfield will convene 39 stakeholder meetings, conduct 13 bicycle skill classes, 13 bike maintenance workshops, and conduct outreach in each of the 13 communities, such as monthly bike rides. They will also encourage cycling through a countywide bike to work day and a rideshare week challenge that will increase active bicycle transportation in Kern County. 
Kern Cog received proposals from Bike Bakersfield and Safe Moves. In their application, Bike Bakersfield disclosed that Bob Smith, the Vice President of Bike Bakersfield's Board of Directors, serves as the Chair of Kern Cog's Board of Directors, representing the City of Bakersfield. Additionally, Cindy Parra, Secretary of Bike Bakersfield's Board of Directors, serves as an ex officio member of the Kern Cog Board of Directors. To address conflict of interest concerns, Kern Cog formed a proposal review team with one individual from the California Department of Public Health who works with the ATP program, and an avid cyclist formerly residing in Bakersfield who lives in Northern California, who has participated in the Southern Sierra Fat Tire Association and the Race Across America team that was from Bakersfield. The two reviewers read and scored the proposals and asked a few questions for follow-up. Kern Cog staff interviewed the proposers and sent the responses to the two reviewers. The proposed budget had been posted to um, the Working with Kern Cog website, and the budget proposed by Safe Moves was over the amount budgeted for a consultant. Bike Bakersfield was selected by the reviewers, not only for budget, but also for the broad collaboration demonstrated in the proposal and the attached letters of support. County Council has approved the agreement as to form. Staff requests that the agreement be approved and the resolution number 22-33 be adopted, authorizing the Vice Chairman to sign, and this would be a roll call vote. Thank you. Any members of the public that have any questions or comments on this item? Okay, seeing none, I'll return to the board for uh, any questions or comments or a motion on staff's recommendation for approval. Motion. Okay, we have a motion. Second. And a second. Roll call vote, please. Couch. Yes. Blades. Aye. Crump. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Lisetovich. Yes. Prout. Yes. Reyna. Aye. Scrivener. Aye. And Vasquez. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So now we have items five, six, and seven with no reports. And so we'll move directly then to item eight, executive director's report. Mr. Akimi, please. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. I will be brief. Um, last month we talked a little bit about um, the negotiations between the legislature and the governor regarding um, a gas tax holiday that did not come to fruition. The legislature and the uh, governor agreed on a tax rebate to uh, certain um, individuals that have uh, an income under a certain amount so the gas tax will will not be adjusted on July 1st well actually it was around July 6th or 7th it was dated July 1st high-speed rail responded to our letter of about uh, three months ago I sent it to all the uh, mayors and uh, the Board of Supervisors who uh, signed that layer, uh, letter. It did not adequately answer uh, the points uh, that were brought up in my opinion, uh, nor did it um, offer a meeting. I called and talked to uh, staff at High Speed Rail, said we are still interested in a face-to-face -face meeting. That was about two weeks ago and uh, still have not heard back. When, when and if I do hear back, I will uh, will let you know. In your folder this evening is a timeline covering August through November, schedule of cash disbursements for May, and a picture of uh, Ridgecrest's 3D printed motel rooms which actually got national attention over the last uh, month or two for your information. Uh, with that, that concludes my report, subject to any of your questions. Thank you, Mr. Hakimi. Any questions for our executive director? In-house? None online either? Okay. Thank you. Uh, do we have any member statements for this agenda? Hearing none, then um, that brings us to the conclusion of our agenda for this evening. Thank you, everyone. And without objection, we will adjourn to um, our next scheduled meeting, which is August 8th. And do we know if we're dark or not in August? We, we will be dark, we Mr. Will be. Chairman. So okay. next meeting's third week, third Thursday in September. Very good. So we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everyone online.